So today I wanted to do a video about the Raspberry Pi 400 and RISC OS. Now RISC OS in my previous video is from the Archimedes Acorn computer operating system and it's still running today which is really incredible. Now this Raspberry Pi 400 has the computer built in which is really cool and apologies for all of the leads. <laughs> so um there's been some interesting discoveries that I've had to do for this. Now, first of all, I really recommend Dan Wood's video. I'll put a link in the description on how to get the um, the OS on the micro SD card for you to be able to use it, and a bit about the software as well. Um, but basically what I've got in here, I've got an Ethernet cable. Um, the version I'm currently on doesn't have Wi-Fi supported, but I've checked a YouTube video and Wi-Fi will be supported, hopefully in a future release coming soon. Um, so that's really exciting. So that's my hub at the moment, which has an Ethernet port, which is why there's an Ethernet uh, lead going into the Raspberry Pi 400. Then what I've got is I've got a standard USB mouse, the red lead is to try and get the sound to work with my headphones because my monitor doesn't actually have sound on it, which is a bit frustrating. Um, now that sound isn't working for me at the moment, which is really unfortunate. I've then got the blue, which is the USB power going into it. I've then got this micro mini um, HDMI adapter, which then goes to a normal uh, which then goes to a normal HDMI port into the monitor. And I think that's pretty much it. And then obviously the SD card as well. Um, so let's have a quick look at Risk OS now, shall we? Okay, that's, so that's pretty much the best view I can get at the moment. So, okay, so this is Risk OS Direct for the Raspberry Pi. And this is just amazing that it's still being developed. In fact, I saw a conference on YouTube recently down south in the UK about how they want to develop this operating system. Um, so yeah, really exciting stuff. So you've got a lot of shortcut function keys to give you an idea. You've got the, um, you need to have a three button mouse as well because the m middle button gives you options. So you can use a scroll wheel for that if you want to. Um, so there's lots of different settings on there. You, as you can see here, you've got the left mouse button click to select. The middle is the scroll wheel, uh, which you click to get options. And then you can actually adjust with the right click and that changes the picture of the mouse. Now, I decided to go for the build that had more software on it. So I've got lots of different software already on here. But because I'm using the ethernet cable, I'm able to, there's a bit of an app store on here, which is really cool that I'll show you in a minute. Now on the right hand side of the monitor, that used to obviously be the Acorn sign. Um, this is the Risk OS logo, which is really cool. And you've still got, look, you can still control how much memory you want and stuff, as you could do with the previous Archimedes, which is really cool. You've then got a um, monitor option here, and it actually recognizes the monitor, which is interesting. I wasn't expecting that. This is one of my favorite applications, which is uh, an organizer. So you've got like your calendar here um, and it because it's got Ethernet cable connected, it's recognized the year. But when I go to diary, oh yeah, it's updated. There we go. So you can see there's an entry on the 28th saying this is the first time I have tried Risk OS on the Raspberry Pi 400. Now a few mistakes here, so I can just make that amendment. Raspberry Pi 400, there we go. And I can make that change there. The options, you can change the view of it. So you can go to two weeks, one week, two days. So yeah, brilliant with this stuff. You can go to a specific date. You've got anniversaries for things like birthdays. You can put your addresses in here and your notes. I love being organized. So I actually I actually love that, um, that organizer app. I thought it's very good indeed. On the bottom left, you've got disks on here, which there's nothing in there at the moment, but the SD card pretty much has everything on it. I've got my own little folder here, look, which is really cool. So you just go onto new directory and then you can create your new folder if you want to. Um, you've got emulators on here, you've got media. There's some really cool stuff by default on here on the build. So for example, if I go to video, the Big Buck Bunny video, and the quality of this stuff was actually really impressive. I was quite impressed. 
you know, you can have multiple stuff going on here. So teal, tears of steel video you can have going on here at the same time. And obviously Raspberry Pi 400 is a lot more over specced compared to what the, you know, the old Archimedes were. So in my last video, I did the A3010, which my dad found in the loft. So I did a video on that and it's, it's streets ahead, as you could imagine, the fact that it's still being developed. So that's really cool. You've got an apps folder on here as well. And I'm just going to close this off because it'll just go on and on and on and distract you. Um, now I have actually been to the store, which is called iStore. Well, it's not iStore because that would be Apple, wouldn't it? It's explanation. So anything with, with that symbol basically means that it's an app or a program as we used to call it in the 90s. So if I go to store, it's going to connect to the ping store server now and I can click on catalog, I can click on categories. And the way that this works, these are all of the apps or programs that you can buy or download for free. Now, they're built into various categories. So for example, if I just have a look at emulators on here, you'll then see the applicable emulators and all of those are currently free. Now, to get more details on those apps, you can hover over, which says backwards compatibility. So it gives you a summary of what that program actually is. But if you want more information, you can double click. I love the double click feature on this operating system. And you can even get a, a full-sized image, there you go, of, of what program, what it's about basically. So it says this is the RiscOS version of the famous game of life. It shows evolutions of cells, black squares on a white grid, according to three simple rules invented by the English mathematician John Conway. And then you simply click get to actually download that, you know. It does encourage you to log in just so that it shows up in your software section. And also it's a good idea because if you ever have any problems with this computer, at least you've got that saved in, in an account. Um, so have a look at the games on here. There's quite a lot of games. Again, some that you pay for, others that you don't. If you're interested, you can also um, double click on the ones that cost money. Uh, so this is a new 3D platform. This one actually looks really good. Um, it's just downloading the image there. There we go, look. <laughs> it was quite comical. I just think it's great because I've gone from a floppy disk on the A3010 thinking, oh, it's really limited in what I can do. There's, you know, I need to spend a, a fortune on eBay just getting like the cover disks and stuff. And then you come to here on the Raspberry Pi, which is still going today. And, and it's like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. You know, it's... Uh, there's loads of, of apps to choose from. Nowhere near as much as what the Amiga would actually have, of course. But nonetheless, there's a lot of apps on here that you can look into. You know, you've got lots of games to check out, basically. If I have a look at home office applications, some of these made me chuckle a little bit. So the Matrix screensaver there, you've got obviously the organizer, or oh, there's a new version of the organizer for 35 pounds, comprising of address book to-do list, journal and notes facility. No pictures, that's a bit unfortunate, that really needs to be done. And some of them are still quite expensive. These, you know, Acon was also used in business before Microsoft really kind of hit the scene. So there was a lot of uh, educational apps for schools in the UK and business stuff as well. So if I have a look at the sound and music category, what have I done with my um, store? Let's load it. Uh, what have I done now? I think I've just closed it by accident. Never mind, never mind. Anyway, let me quickly retrieve it from the bottom there. There we go. Schoolboy error there, because anything that you load is then in the, what I like to call the taskbar. That's what I know it as. Um, I mean, the terminology is different with with RiscOS, like for example, the desktop is known as the pinboard. So if I go to here, you can see it actually says pinboard at the top here. You've got like radio apps, you've got music players, like here, look, DVD players, sample editors, which I thought was quite interesting. Because um, we rely so heavily on Windows and, and um, I'm an Apple person at heart, but 
We rely so much on the typical dull operating system. So it's just refreshing to use a different operating system from my point of view. You've got some text apps. Um, obviously, if you select more than one category, it's going to only show the ones with both those categories associated to them. But yeah, I, I just thought the fact you've got a applications program yeah. is really cool. I love that. Now, I don't know what all of these apps do, um, but obviously a lot of them have been updated and you can check that by going to your middle button. And then I want to go to info, actually. Perhaps I need to load it. If I double click and then go to here, there you go, info. So there you go. So this was uh, last updated in 1993, but, oh no, sorry, that's the author. The version that was last updated in 2020. So let's have a look at draw because I showed what draw was on the previous computer. Okay, not drastically different, really. But then, you know, it could have had a lot of bugs fixed on it, whatever. You've got the edit for editor, which is just a text-based editor. Fireworks. This, uh, yeah, I think is a bit of a word program. I mean, for me, the resolution is quite small, so apologies if it's, uh, if it's quite tricky. So, hello world. But yeah, this seems to be the best re resolution for me, to be fair. Um, graph task, net surf. Oh, not enough memory, you're kidding me. Let me close some of these apps. Is it because I got rid of the um, not enough memory? What can I do for that? Because it was working yesterday. Uh, did I not make enough free? So you've got pin board on here. I mean, I have been, to be fair, accessing a lot of stuff. I'll tell you what, let's shut down and restart because it really doesn't take long and I like to show the boot up the sequence. Hopefully it doesn't blur too much for you. So yeah, so this is uh, Risk OS running on the Raspberry Pi 400. I went for the 400 because it's got the keyboard built in so it's like having your own computer whereas having even more leads to connect um, a keyboard and you know to it it just seemed a bit excessive for me because I could have gone for the Raspberry Pi 4 but now I decided to pay the extra and go for the uh, 400 right it's just booting up now risk os 5 2020 there we go so great so if I go back to my apps we were on NetSurf weren't we there we go Look at this. We have an internet browser. I mean, none of my old computers had the internet. You know, I was very jealous when one of my friends had like a bulletin board on his Amiga and stuff. I was like, wow, this is the future. This is the future. I mean, you have to bear in mind that this isn't completely like fast, you know, um, but it could be my internet to be fair because I am running off the hub. So it might be quite... It might be a lot quicker to be fair um, when Wi Fi is kind of enabled. It's definitely taking a, a bit of a time. But there is another browser called the Otter Browser. Did that not work? Have I just managed to? I think I've just crashed it. I think I have. I think I've just filled the memory up. And this is something that you have to bear in mind. This is why, oh, it's just popped up. This is why they want to try and just update this again, really. Just just give it the new technology that it deserves. Make it future-proof. Yeah, something's definitely going on here. I've messed it up a bit. Can I open debug? Okay, fine. Okay, let's see what else. Now, there's a music program on here called Maestro. But basically, you could write your notation. Oh, this is back to my old theory days at school that I never really enjoyed theory because I played by ear. Yeah, I'm a musician at heart. I've done over 50 albums, but I hate theory. Absolutely hated it. <laughs> Got paint on here. Now, let's see when paint was last updated. 2020. So let's have a look. Oh, yeah, definitely quite a few updates on here. Oh, Barry, what are you doing? I can't bear. Okay, yeah, I can see that everything's been updated. Got the spray can, which I've always enjoyed. 
Okay, that's pretty cool. You got the fill. Nice. Very nice. I like that. It's just nice to see how things have progressed. You've got printers, writer, Python 3, um, AMP to play your videos. You know, it's all here. And, and as well as that, you've got even more in the SD card. So you've got things like, I'm trying to think, Diversions is a really good one because you've got lots of games on here. So you've got Doom on here that you can actually play. So if I load that, you'll get Doom on the bottom. There we go, look at this. 1993, goodness me. Oh, I forgot it could be uh, demoed like that. And then obviously new game. I'm too young to die, I wish I was. Never understood all of the um, shortcuts on here and things because I'm not, I mean, I haven't even worked out how to jump, which isn't very helpful really. Can I go up there? See, I, can't, I just don't know how to play this game, to be honest. I'm using the mouse to play at the moment, but ugh. Oh, there we go, look at all of this stuff. I want that bodysuit, that's it. Perhaps I am playing it right, but then jump would be quite helpful. I thought this was like blue lava or something and you couldn't go in it. Obviously you can. Oh, how do I open that? Is that the first door ever? I don't know. Just, okay, shoot, that's it. I'm not the best at games, guys, unless it's something like um, Mario. <laughs> or Halo, I'm pretty good at Halo. So yeah, lots of games on here. Card games like Patience. I'm really not going to play that now. Shanghai, the Chinese game. You've got Mine Hunt, the good old Mine Hunt, where you have to guess where the bombs are. So there's three bombs on near this square, and you have to guess which one it is. Oh, I died. Of course I did. You know, it's just good to... You get a lot of nostalgia with this, which I think is really cool. I'm trying to think which one was the funny... App. Yeah, Madness. Look at that. I love that. You could, I remember my friend at school, secondary school, um, we had all of the A3020s and what he did is he hid a lot of the apps and he managed to get madness and he, he'd put it on all the computers and nobody knew how to turn it off or anything. They were like, there's a problem with this computer, it's not working. So, <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Happy days, happy days. Now what, what it is, is it, it's actually down here, so you can just close that. Got meteors on here. Again, I'm not going to play this stuff. Blocks, obviously, like a Tetris, similar thing. It's just great. I mean, I think, again, I've said this so many times, but just to have a different operating system that's still being updated to this day is really impressive. You know, you've got, you've got tons on here to look into. Um, I'm trying to remember what Pipe Dream was. Oh yeah, I, I think I loaded that last time, didn't I? Um, so there, yeah, you can spend endless hours here and I'm not gonna really do any more. So there you have it. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, bye.